let's say we have this hypothetical box mm -hmm. and you have to say one thing that defines who you are and that would be in the box, what would you say? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. don't want that. <laughs> we don't like boxes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Zella. And we're at the University of Colorado Boulder. And we are here to capture the stories of ordinary people serving an extraordinary guy. Buffalo Whisperer. What's like the like mascot? Like yeah, what do you do with like your hands? Go like Buffs. <laughs> Sco Buffs. Go the girls buffs. do this. Do the guys do this? Why don't the Go guys buffs. do it? <laughs> so Nick, what are you excited about today? Uh, I'm excited to hang out with college students. I love college students. I think it's just such a strategic age in life to just ask them about the deeper questions and see what they're thinking about different things like identity, prayer, purpose. I'm just really excited and looking forward to picking their brains about that. From what I've heard, Boulder is a pretty unique microcosm of culture, and so I'm just really excited to get to know the students here. Um, and yeah, and hopefully as they're wrestling through their own questions about identity, purpose, things like that, to see how the gospel and Jesus get to fit into those things. Sco Buffs. Sco Buffs. <laughs> Hello. We're just kind of going around asking people questions. Do you have time to answer some questions? Let's say we have this hypothetical box mm -hmm. and you have to say one thing that defines who you are and that would be in the box. What would you say? I would probably start like tearing apart the box. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take yeah. the box out of there. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. don't want that. <laughs> we don't like boxes. <laughs> the box is gone. So yeah. Now that the box is gone. <laughs> okay. Seeking. A multitude of experiences. Okay. Mm. What's been one of your coolest experiences that you really treasure? So there have been a few times that I've taken psychedelics and sure. I felt okay. that those experiences were just allowed me to see things from a different like way or um, see layers of the world that I didn't know were there. Yeah. And yeah. so that makes me see things in sober reality differently. Mm, mm -hmm. And so I'm curious about all of the ways that we can experience things. Yeah. What did you kind of make of, of some of Kat's comments about kind of searching for experiences and kind of transcendental experiences? Yeah. Well, it's interesting that like I think people just in general will go to great lengths to have those experiences. Mm -hmm. Like she mentioned psychedelics and it's just like, man, like we're part of a, you know, materialistic realm, but there's also the spiritual realm, which we don't really experience, but like it's happening all around us all the time. Yeah. And we don't like, that's just the reality. We don't have to take psychedelics to like have that happen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just think it's interesting that people can get so, uh, so caught up in like wanting to find those things and going to great lengths of finding those things but they actually don't necessarily need to do yeah. that. I always want everyone to be taken care of. Yeah. Um, and so like balance means a lot of different things. It means healing. Mm -hmm. um, it means everyone feeling validated. What it's do you think it means to care for people? Or what does caring for people look like? Ooh, that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out right mm -hmm. now. It's pretty daunting because the within our current systems it's like you, it seems like you give care to one person and you take it away from another mm, or yeah. like you um you bring your presence to one person and somebody else feels neglected mm. um and so i kind of just want to like tear down and burn all of those systems and yeah. build new ones where we can all really meet each other yeah, yeah. zilla how do you think that went yeah, I thought that went well. They, I was grateful that they were willing to engage. Um, and yeah, I just love, I love how students are just try, trying to deconstruct everything, um, yeah. like tearing down the box that we were she didn't trying. Like the box. She did not like the she box. She the box. No box next time. <laughs> Them recognizing systems in the world that don't work and that yeah. that people, yeah, to care for one group of people that kind of comes at the expense of others. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that is. That is, I would say that's pretty characteristic of a lot of students is that they look at the systems in the world and like these are broken and 
we need to tear them down to yeah. fix them. But um, they don't know how to fix them, exactly. I think, because there's too many variables. Ways I love conversation to go, um, mm. had they been willing to, to dialogue a little bit more about what what do they think is their hope in the midst of that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, obviously we have found our hope in the gospel. And yeah, yeah we're very much in agreement that the systems of the world are really broken. Mm-hmm. And like how, how does what Jesus accomplished on the cross and the inauguration of the kingdom of God, like how does that just break into this broken world and bring healing and yeah. redemption and restoration in yeah. ways that we can't do for ourselves because we don't, we are selfish. We don't know how to care for people. Mm-hmm. We don't know how to do this on our own um, or do this in a way that is actually inclusive of everybody. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, only Jesus can do that. Yeah, for sure. For me, it's all about like radical acceptance and hospitality. That's yeah, very I'm cool. like thinking of like going to Divinity School one day, but like that's awesome. Like, I'm like a queer awesome. person who mm, like mm-hmm. um, does not who like believes that like we are all you know mm-hmm. made in God's image, even though totally. like that angers other denominations. Mm, sure. And so yeah. yeah, yeah, I just get very wary of this type. Of thing. Yeah, for no, sure. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And like I love you, but uh, yeah, be a but. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there isn't a but in like where I stand in my faith. Mm-hmm. Sure. Do you know what divinity schools you're considering? Basically yeah. the ones that would be down with the queer woman pastor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which yeah. are not many. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. Mostly talked with Lindsay and yeah, just I think it was very admirable of her desire to love people. Like mm-hmm. I think her heart is in the right place. Recognizing getting swayed by the culture of things around her is something that I kind of noticed. I could feel the defensiveness um, Mm -hmm. a little bit and yeah yeah, trying to communicate that like our hearts are for Jesus and are for the good news um, and that yeah it is about love and it is about grace and yeah that that message goes hand in hand with acknowledging things like sin but um, yeah just wanting wanting to find those points of connection and it felt like there was moments when it, yeah, it got a little defensive, which mm. um, I think kind of shut down dialogue a little bit, which made me a little sad because, mm-hmm. yeah, I think she does want to love God and to love her neighbor and to understand what that means. Um, and yeah, so, but I was grateful that they were willing to talk to us. Yeah, me too. So I've noticed that mustaches are great conversation starters. Let's see if that plays out. How's it going? This might sound weird but I'm convinced that my mustache is a great conversation starter. Uh-huh. And I see you have a mustache. Oh okay. yeah. I feel like we should chat. Do you, feel, do you feel this? My name's Nick. Luca. Luca? Where are you from, Nick? I'm from Wyoming. Wyoming? Yeah, up in Laramie. Do you feel like that mustache is like part of your identity? Like, does it define my part mustache? of who you are? I mean, yeah, I'm normally rocking a little goatee. I took it off okay. a few days ago. I've been kind of just seeing what's going on with a handlebar mustache. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Planning on buzzing my head with it. Okay, so, just mustache, buzz head. Yeah, give it yeah. a little bit of an interesting look. I'm not nice. Used to doing it, but um, no, I definitely do. I just need to grow it in a little bit thicker, it's a little loose right now. Yeah, you hey, that's a, okay. You got a good mustache. Thanks. As well. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Part of your identity for sure. Uh, I think I get compliments on it, but I wouldn't say it's like part of my identity. You okay. know, okay. like it's more like it's like part of. The, and I just like to experiment with facial hair. Oh. I think of I'm it more same, as like a fun, way, a fun yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. The mask is annoying though, man. It's rubbing all. Oh man. Shit. And then like, like when it gets really cold, like the condensation. Oh, when it freezes your mustache hairs. Yeah. Hate that. Just, Hate that. I'll be biking around and sweating a little bit and it just freezes yeah. to my f***ing lips. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> so Brian, what yeah. has Boulder been like for the past year? You know, Boulder, we experienced fires a year ago mm-hmm. <laughs> in, the, in the fall and then we experienced, uh, you know, a riot that made national headlines. We experienced, um, you know, a, a mass shooting, unfortunately, wow. at a local grocery store that just uh, rattled. And I just think, man, the list goes like massive yeah. events um, that can be sometimes really traumatic. We realized that in many ways we were creating like a college youth group, but it was kind of all designed and created around believers. And as navigators, we want to raise up laborers you know um so that we can have laborers next door to everywhere and we want to see the kingdom of god advance and you know on the college campus it's you know there's many different statistics out there but like 90 to 95 percent of students 
um, you know, are likely lost or don't know Christ on yeah. campus. That's a lot of students. So if we're just gathering Christians mm -hmm. together, are we really accomplishing mm -hmm. the vision that even Jesus gave us to send out laborers into the harvest and to go and make disciples? And so we, we cut our leadership team and changed it to be like, hey, if you want to be a if you want to be a leader with us, this is what it looks like. Yeah. We want to see lifetime generational disciple makers. And so we want to help equip and empower them to do that um, starting uh, right here That's on amazing. campus. Yeah. That's amazing. We're here with some three, you guys call yourselves boulderites? Boulderites? Yeah. What's the <laughs> correct honored, term? Yeah. Boulderites? I think that's it. Okay, yeah. where's everyone? Yeah. Uh, but we're here with three <laughs> Boulderites. We got AP, Sarah, and Corey. Um, and yeah, they're here longer term, which is super exciting because Zell and I are just kind of dropped in. But you three are here longer term. And we're going to go initiate with some students and ask them about different things about purpose, identity, and prayer. So see you out there. Yeah. Hey. My thumbs up is like, that's when it's like the cue, like I'm done <laughs> talking. So we read a stat recently that 55% of Americans say they pray. So we were just wondering what you think. Do you pray? Who do you pray to? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's your name, by the way? Ethan. Ethan? I'm Corey. Corey. Nice to meet you. And I'm AP. AP? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. So, so do you pray? Do you have... Yeah. Yeah. Who do you pray to? Okay. Uh, nobody specifically. You know, okay. Just sort of... Kind of a higher power. Yeah. Totally. Just gratitude for the sake of gratitude. Yeah? That's sweet. What kind of things do you, like, are, are you grateful for? Um, specifically? Mm-hmm. Just... The, the many blessings all around me, mm -hmm. really. I mean, the sun's Sweet. shining today. Yeah. Is, that's something worth Totally. Dying. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. I was raised Catholic, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spending my whole life, but you know. Yeah. Totally. Are you still, would you say you're Catholic or? Not, not practicing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And why is that? I just, uh, I had enough of the dogma. Mm -hmm. So where are you guys coming from? Are you guys also yeah. prayer people? Like, yeah, yeah. Affiliated? Definitely. So yeah, we're both we're both yeah. um, followers of Christ. Um, so yeah, I pray often. Mm -hmm. Probably more when I'm low, actually. But I, <laughs> I'm encouraged that you pray when you're grateful. I think that's something I should do. Um, have you ever had prayers like answered? Is that? Oh yeah. Yeah. All the time. Heck yeah. I think our prayers are answered, but it's not always the way we want it to be. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I feel like I I pray a ton, and a lot of times I don't. I don't even know if God's even listening to me too, and. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's really, like, in hindsight, really encouraging to see how prayers are answered, mm -hmm. even if it's not even close to the way we anticipate them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Answered totally. So what I love is that Corey and AP, you guys are here, you're on campus, mm -hmm. um, you're a student, you're on staff, and you just engage with the students. So mm -hmm. how'd it go? What'd you, what'd you guys think? It went well. Yeah. Um, I always want to go deeper, and I want to talk about Jesus. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it was hard to kind of balance that, but it was cool to talk about, you know, that he, he did think about God and he did like talk to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even if he doesn't necessarily believe in Catholicism or Christianity, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just cool to have things to say and just how the Lord uses mm -hmm. like the spirit to guide our words and just the way we talk to people, just like naturally and just going up to people, it's really sweet. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thanks for doing Thank all you. the work on the campus. For sure. That. Of course. Well, we're back where we started. Back where we started. With Ralphie. Yeah. So, yeah. How would you kind of debrief the past couple days at Boulder? Yeah. It's been really interesting. I, I'm i very grateful that students, overall, it felt like they were willing to engage. Mm -hmm. um, they're clearly asking a lot of questions about things like their identity mm -hmm. and their purpose, asking about yeah, how to take care of the world. I, I saw a lot of people with really great intentions and they wanted to, to help others and help themselves yeah. and that they were here to explore a lot of those questions. Um, and yet at the same time, yeah, there were moments when kind of a defensiveness went up. Um, if it ever, yeah, if we ever identified ourselves as Christians or part of a faith-based yeah. organization, um, yeah. I, can, I, I sense kind of a, a suspicion um, or a reticence about organized religion, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think for me, like, yeah, just I've, I sensed a bit of, like, mistrust, like, us yeah. initiating with students for the first time of, like, uh, I don't really know you. Like, yeah. what's, what's your agenda? Like, what are you doing? And I think yeah. they saw, like, the mics at times yeah. and stuff, too. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, I think 
just I really am so thankful that like we were able to be here for a little bit and who knows if we you know I love the illustration of just putting a pebble in a shoe and maybe that's just something that they'll chew on and think about later yeah maybe that's what we did um, but I'm just really thankful for navigator staff that are here longer term to walk side by side with those students that have those questions yeah. that we see for 10 to 15 minutes in a conversation whereas yeah. they can actually you know walk alongside them for a longer period of time and um, if they're searching and whatnot so it's just cool to see that God cares about this campus and that he's yeah, reaching this campus sure. through small interactions that we've had um, but also other people yeah. um, which is super encouraging. Thanks so much for joining us on this adventure at CU Boulder and we'll see you next time. See you later. Campus TBD. Mm. That was dumb. We hear there are Girl Scout cookies here. Yes, you do. Oh my goodness. Oh. And so, then there's also lollipops. Oh. Three blocks will do it for you? Yes sir. Right. $15. $15. So what brings y'all out to CU Boulder's campus in particular? To be fair, it's easy money. <laughs> <laughs> College students are like, yes, Awesome. Thank you, so Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Amazing. Have a nice day. Yeah, Thank you. You, you as well. well. Best of luck. Thanks so much. We will enjoy all. Enjoy yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was really creepy. <laughs> Is that what Girl Scout stands for? Go-getter, innovator, risk-taker, leader? I don't think so. Is that... No, I mean, it's on all the boxes. I feel like it's in an acronym. retrospect, it's an acronym. that's what they made it stand for. Go-getter, innovator. It, I feel like it didn't we start as It didn't start as an acronym. There's we're changing no Edge Core to Girl Core <laughs> to be go-getters, innovator, risk-takers, and leaders. Yeah, I think that sounds on par for what we do.